Chotta Mate, how did we not do this already in 2024? You people know, right? Just a while back, NVIDIA launched their 40 series Super Edition cards, right? And we have reviewed each and every variant of this new lineup on our channel. And I think we are the probably only channel in India that has made like detailed reviews and benchmarks on all the variant of the cards. So in case if you haven't watched that video, you'll definitely find all the videos on our channel. Make sure to check them out. So in that video only, I got like a couple of comments saying, Vimal, bro, you'll have to do something epic with these new cards and you know make something exclusive so that is what i'll be doing in this video as the video's title says we will be building the fastest gaming pc featuring one of these super edition cards keeping that aside one thing you might actually notice is something different with the video quality right so i have a brand new camera in the studio in fact the video that i'm shooting right is from that camera only i don't want to reveal the name it is still being tested and reviews under progress so you can definitely let me know your thoughts about the image quality in the comment section down below you will anyhow get to know what camera that is in the next few days. First of all, let's talk about the whole theme and also the components we'll be using. The components I'll be using for this build are also very interesting. In fact, some new models that recently came out in the market. I actually got like a couple of packages recently for review and testing purpose, guys. Some of them are from ROG. I got like a brand new Pro Art Edition case. When did Asus make this? Plus a brand new ROG liquid cooler as well. So I thought, why not use them only for the build and make like an all Asus theme gaming PC? Pretty interesting, right? So that is the concept I'll be going for today. Anyways, talking about the components, first of all, the CPU guys. Now, obviously, we are building like the fastest gaming PC, right? So I'll be using like top of the line components only. And for that sake, I have chosen Intel's 14th gen i9 CPU guys, 14900K. And let me tell you, this i9 14900K is a beast CPU guys. I mean, that is capable of hitting almost like 6 gigahertz out of the box. 24 cores, 32 threads, monster CPU. There's a slight misunderstanding that I actually found among audience in the comment section. People are thinking that this 6 gigahertz is actually all core clock frequency but that is not the case guys only two cores are actually capable of hitting 6 gigahertz that too with intel thermal velocity boost that too when certain conditions are met so keep this point in mind the all core max clock frequency is somewhere around like 5.8 gigahertz i believe guys to be precise it's 5.785 gigahertz and that too when you're actually using like a proper cooling solution if you're using like some fall to or smaller cooler now you won't get these sort of results so do not compromise on the cooling especially on the i9 14 900k guys it's a beast cpu that is what i can say now moving on and talking about the motherboard i actually had like a couple of variants to choose from and let me tell you if you are actually strictly going behind like fast and furious edition right you will have a big hole in your pocket and that i didn't wanted you people to have and that is the reason i actually chose like asus tough edition b760 plus wi-fi edition motherboard guys so this is like a value for money motherboard that will even offer you like wi-fi 6 as well and has all the features you might be looking for plus it is tough branded right so obviously you're getting like solid build quality with military grade components and not to miss out that chunky block of vrm heat sinks guys i mean look at that you're also getting like a 12 plus 1 plus 1 driver mosfet power stage and really good quality motherboard guys plenty of good features as well though one thing i do have to mention this particular variant is actually available in two variants you get like ddr4 edition and ddr5 is also there so if you want to save a little bit more money over here you are maybe tight on a budget right you can go for the ddr4 edition and go with like a much affordable ddr5 ram which hardly costs around like 4000 5000 rupees today in the indian market guys that too with rgb lighting if you're looking for the ddr5 edition motherboard price will also increase plus ram price will also increase so it depends on your budget today i'll be going with the ddr4 edition and the main reason for that is i couldn't find the ddr5 edition of this tough motherboard anywhere in the market guys so maybe some sort of shortage due to demand so that is the reason i went for the ddr4 edition except the ram compatibility everything else is same and moving on let me tell you about the gpu as well as i've told you guys obviously we are going for like a kill bill pc i'm saying top of the line edition right so i'll be using the best of the trio edition cards 4080 super that too today in the house we have rog strix edition rtx 4080 super oc edition model this is one heck of a beast gpu guys titan class behemoth is what i can call it i mean just look at the size of this thing 3.5 slot design with that beautiful rog theme Man, every time I look at these Strix Edition cards, right, I straight fall in love with them. Absolutely smacking. So that was about the card, keeping that aside, right, going on and talking about the RAM. At the beginning, I've told you, right, we are building like an all ASUS theme gaming PC. And for that reason, I chose T-Force 
Tough Alliance Gaming RAM. So this is like a 16 GB 1822 kit clocked at 3600 megahertz and DDR4 edition because we're going for a DDR4 motherboard. Now let's get to the cooling part. At the beginning only I've told you do not compromise on the cooling solution because we are not using some mediocre CPU guys. We are using top of the line Intel's 14th gen i9-14900K and this thing definitely gets hot, consumes a lot of watts. So I would recommend you to go for like a 360mm AI only if you want to bring out the best potential of this CPU. And today in the house we have ROG's all new Strix LC3 guys 2024 model and this is a 360mm ARGB liquid cooler. It's got a brand new and quite a Racetech Gen 7 V2 pump, one of the very first liquid coolers to actually feature this. Plus also comes with an upgraded cold plate on the bottom that is capable of additional 100 watts of cooling. So I'm pretty excited to put this to a test and see how this thing tames the i9-14900K. And not to miss out, the pump head, the water block over there is fully 360 degree rotatable magnetic pump head guys. You can rotate it in any direction so you do not need to worry about aligning the liquid cooler. And what else is left? Power supply right? So for this sort of configuration right, 850 watt power supply would be more than enough. We are using something from Asus. This is their tough edition 850 watt gold rated power supply. Value for money product again is what I can say. And lastly if you talk about the case, case is special as I've told you at the beginning right, we got a brand new Pro Art edition case from Asus. I didn't even knew that Asus had a Pro Art edition case. So this is also like a very first build I'm doing with this particular product. It's got some neat and interesting features guys. First of all, it is specially made for like creators and is creator friendly. So this is like a massively jumbo sized case that supports up to E-ATX motherboards as well and has a beautiful pro art theme design on the front side. It's got an all black clean and modern look and is built especially for airflow and cooling. If you look at the fan side right, you're actually getting three pre-installed fans, two massive 200mm fans on the front side and one 140mm fan at the rear side. Though unfortunately Unfortunately, these are non-RGB fans, so if you want RGB, you will have to do that separately. And good thing is it does support AIO radiators up to 420mm as well. And as I've told you, it is fully creator friendly. For the GPU installation, right, you're getting a toolless design. You don't need any sort of screwdriver. You can actually check it out uh, during the installation and building process. And apart from that, you're also getting like an integrated GPU holder as well and comes with bottom wheels on the case. So you can easily take it anywhere within your home or office. So super friendly, I would say. Say. And that is pretty much it, the complete list of components we have chosen for today's PC build. So without wasting any more time, let's quickly get started with the video. Yo, that is a fine looking build bro, absolutely bussin. I mean it's got a twin personality. On the outside, it kinda looks neat, modern and introvert style right? But have a peek on the inside and bam, completely opposite. You people know what I'm talking about right? And man that RGB lighting is scandaliously looking good. Fully customizable using their ASUS Armory Grade software. And oh, I totally forgot to talk about this thing. I have a new accessory from ROG, it's a toolless GPU holder and that too comes with RGB lighting. because. The the Strix 4080 Super that we are using is a Godzilla size card and pretty damn heavy and using these GPU holders definitely prevent any sort of GPU sag from happening. Okay, it's about time we booted up the build and put it to a test. I'm pretty excited to see what this configuration can offer. We are running i9-14900K paired with an RTX 4080 Super OC edition that is the Strix edition with 16 gigs of VRAM. That right there is a dream gaming PC for all the gamers out there guys. And this is powerful enough to run any sort of triple 
play title game at 4K maximum ultra graphics. Now, before directly jumping into the gaming section, I have also ran like a couple of benchmarks. Here are the Geekbench 6 results. Just have a look at that. And now, quickly moving on to the next section, the first game we'll be testing out today is Cyberpunk 2077. As you can see, we are playing this game at native 4K resolution with all the graphics maxed out. And in this first test, I'll not be using any sort of NVIDIA technologies, no ray tracing, no DLSS, nothing, because I want to show you the raw rasterization performance of this configuration. So here we go. Oh, okay, not bad. On an average, we were getting around like 45 to 50 FPS at 4K maximum ultra graphics that to in the middle of night city guys, peak traffic, lot of action going on. Now, one thing you do have to remember is due to budget restrictions, if you go for like a DDR4 RAM edition, right, this will be the case. But instead of this, if you go for the DDR5 setup, right, you'll straight see 10 to 15% performance improvement and you'll be able to easily get a consistent 60, 65 FPS at the same graphic settings. So if you have the the budget definitely go for that quickly enabling ray tracing and dlss with the frame generation at the same 4k maximum ultra graphics bam three times performance improvement now we are getting almost like 115 fps on an average now that is more like it switching over to a second game spider-man remastered doing similar sort of tests like before 4k maximum ultra first test no ray tracing no dlss no frame generation and these are the results 130 fps on an average god damn that is pretty good i would say muska gaming performance no lag no stutter i mean come on this is like a top of the line build that anybody can dream of obviously you'll get these sort of results quickly enabling ray tracing that to be DLSS enabled at the same time and these are the results actually pretty similar sort of results right 120 125 fps on an average that too with ray tracing enabled now that is the kind of performance you can expect over here as i've told you just now guys instead of this if you go for the ddr5 setup right it'll actually make you future proof as well and you're set for like next to four to five years without worrying about your configuration or the ray and also look at the thermals as well the new rog lc3 is definitely doing a good job keeping the 14 gen i9 in check running at 75 to 78 degrees for an i9 right is pretty normal i would say all right then boys this is what i wanted to show you all in this video time to wrap it up before doing that let me also quickly talk about the price list for this configuration so on the screen you can check out all the details including the cpu gpu price motherboard and everything it'll roughly cost you around like 2.84 lakh rupees for the ddr4 edition if you switch over to the ddr5 right expect around like 10 12,000 rupees increase in the price and that is a whole difference so roughly under 3 lakh rupees right you can easily build like the fastest and most powerful super edition gaming pc in 2024 so what do you people think share your thoughts in the comment section down below and definitely rate the build out of 10 guys i'd be looking forward to your comments if you all enjoyed watching this video make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel for more such awesome videos and i'll see you all in my next one